In this video, we're going to discuss heuristics and judging probabilities. And in particular, we're going to go over the base rate fallacy, the representativeness heuristic, and the availability heuristic. As a reminder, heuristics are practical methods for solving problems. And sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't work. In this video, we're going to look at several examples where they can fail. The first is the base rate fallacy. This is a decision-making error that occurs when the base rate is ignored or largely disregarded. As an example, participants were asked to determine if a person described as being shy is either a salesperson or librarian. Now, many of these participants knew that there are many more salespersons than librarians in the US. In fact, there are 50 times more salespersons than librarians in the US. This of course indicates that this person is most likely a salesperson. However, most of the participants ignored the space rate. They instead focused on the idea that this person is shy and they guessed that they were a librarian. So this is an example of base rate fallacy where the base rate is ignored. Okay, so next let's go over the representativeness heuristic. This is a type of base rate fallacy where the probability of an event is based on how similar it is to the prototype of the event. As an example, we can consider flipping five coins. So if you flip five coins and you're looking at the results, here I have two possible results, five heads or tail, heads, heads, tail, tail. For most people, when they think about the prototype of the results of flipping five coins, they would think that it looks something more like the second sequence and not the first sequence. And indeed, when participants were asked to select which sequence of results is more likely, most of them picked this second sequence. The problem though, however, is that when it comes to probability, both of these sequences are equally probable. So this is an example of how a prediction is incorrect because the individual used how similar the result was to the prototype of the event to determine its probability. All right, finally, we have the availability heuristic. This is estimating the probability of event based on the ease with which relevant instances come to mind. So as an example, participants were asked to estimate what is the rate of engine failures on planes. And if individuals were aware that recently there was a plane crash that was due to engine failure that was widely publicized on the news, the individual was more likely to overestimate the rate of plane engine failures. Right? Not because they knew the actual answer, but just because it was very easy for them to come up with a relevant instance in mind. Another example is if you ask an individual to predict what the divorce rate is in the US, they will think about if there are any instances they can think of. So let's say recently one of the individual's friends, their parents got divorced. Then that person is likely to overestimate the divorce rate. All right, so that's the availability heuristic, estimating the probability event based on how many relevant instances comes to mind.